Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to a finance uh, construction committee meeting tonight. Uh, we have uh, several members present, Mr. Simmons, Mr. Miss Emanuel, Mr. Gentry, and uh, Mr. Leach, and Smith, and our superintendent, and uh, also some uh, cabinet members down here at the board. And uh, also virtual, I know Mr. Lawson's there, Mr. Grady Hunt, uh, Mr. Terry Locklear, and Mr. Kent Brandt from the Planetary. Uh, Mr. John, will you give us an invocation real quick? And the Father, gracious Lord, we come to you thanking you for all the mercy you gave us. We thank you for allowing us to be here on your earth in a new year. We ask you to bless the school system and the employees and all that's in it. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Okay, I, I know you have an agenda in front of you, and we'll be moving through parts of this. Uh, Anybody need a pencil? Chair. And if you have questions. Extra that we could have, I could have something. Uh, what you need? You have an agenda, anything. Agenda? Oh, right here. Right here. <laughs> you didn't bring your I mean, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a copy of everything. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> Get you didn't get one through the mail? Thank you. Okay, uh, Number one there on the agenda says uh, needs-based public school capital fund update. Uh, Dr. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to Chairman Lawson. Appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Happy New Year to our public and everyone with that. Let me ask uh, Ms. Erica if you would share with us how uh, the need-based grant application has changed, what those changes are, and what we would qualify under the new application, please. Okay, yes, sir. As everyone uh, recalls, we have been awarded the $15 million need, needs-based grant in our initial application. So part of those changes is those new maximums on those grants. So the new maximum for elementary schools is $30 million, $40 million for middle schools, and $50 million for high schools. So the total would be all of those numbers I, I mentioned. So if we want to build a high school, we would get an additional 35 million on top of the 15 to give us the total of the 50. That's how it works in the new application. Um, the grant funds now don't only have to be used for new construction, but of course that is our intent to use for new construction. The local match before was every dollar for every three dollars we match one so for 15 million we had to have a match of five our new match is five percent of the 30 uh 50 million or the 35 excuse me 35 and uh that would be uh 1.75 750,000 would be the five percent there um they also eliminated the five-year uh period where they would withhold our lottery funds for construction. So part of the original need-based grant, we would receive normally about one and a half million dollars each year for construction and that was being withheld. That has been removed from the language now so they'll no longer withhold lottery funds. And it also eliminates uh, before you could only apply for one grant over a five-year period. They've eliminated that five-year restriction. So. It's our understanding that you can request funds every year as long as funds remain available. And the new application deadline for this grant is uh, March the 15th of this year. Any questions? Any questions? So, Ms. Erica, if, if we apply for the additional grant, uh, that would increase our award, assuming it's approved, from 15 to 50 million. That's correct. That's, yes, sir. Mr. Cole, could you check the volume? Mr. Grady's saying I think he's having some trouble hearing. Another 
the idea of what our uh, lottery funds award. Sir? Our award from the lottery funds, how much would we get from that? Do you know? We normally receive one and a half million dollars a year from lottery for construction costs. Um, and so those were being withheld because we've been awarded the, the 15 million. But okay, now, so, so that's out of the picture at this point, then, the lottery funds. Right, but part of the new application says they'll no longer withhold it. So we, we do have to get some clarity on if they're gonna to continue to withhold it for five years or if now immediately it'll be returned because there's a new application. We're waiting for clarity on that. Anyone else? I have a question. If we, uh, if, if we said that we would like to build a, a new school uh, and pursue these funds, would we have to have the location pinned down um, in order to apply? So the language before mentioned that you had to have a shovel ready project. It does not discuss that in the new language of the, the new needs base. But I mean, the idea is um, that you have a project, of course, in mind, and you would have to put details of what you wanted to do within the application. Is there a completion deadline? March 15th, 2022. No, he's talking about like if you build something. You oh, I'm sorry. Build something there. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right, Mr. Mike. Sorry. Um, not at this, not that we can tell at this time. No, sir. There used to be that five year timeline that you had to complete the project, correct? That's correct. But there is not there in, in the language they've given us now, there is not, <clears throat> excuse me. There's not a uh, completion date deadline. Anyone else? Mr. Craig, did you mention that, Eric, or did, I know we had, or are you going to mention that maybe, or Dr. Winston, you said one time there's three or four or five counties now, there's, are you going to do, you fix them to do that, Dr. Winston, or she, in 95 county? Because of the new dollar amount of $395 million, uh, change in the tax rate formula, now 95 counties qualify uh, to submit an application. In the past, help me to remember, Erica. In the past, it was limited to only Tier 1 counties, and now it has been expanded um, beyond the Tier 1 counties. So 95 of the 100 counties in the state can submit an application for need base. That's correct. Competition for the money has increased greatly, <laughs> greatly. It used to be, you know, a county like us had a greater, much greater chance, but with them doing this now, it's opened it up to basically, you might as well say, the whole state. Okay, uh, item number two, uh, planetary and funding update. Good evening, uh, committee members, committee chairs, uh, Superintendent Williamson. May I have permission to sh uh, share my screen, please? Yes. Yeah. All right, let me pull this up. And then switch screens here, sorry. Okay, you'd think I would have mastered this by now, right? Okay. All right, so. Okay, here we go. Sorry about the delay, folks. Okay, there we go. Now, hopefully you're seeing what's looking like um, the bare bones of a PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and go to uh, full screen and let me know if you can see the full screen picture here, please. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so this is a picture at, um, you know, I see a lot, <laughs> but um, that's the picture of the planetarium inundated the day after Matthew left town. And um, there's our whoops. There's our star projector laying on its side. Um, after the floodwaters were inside the building in the planetarium, they were up to about almost the top of the tabletop you see in the back of the room there with the globe, the colorful globe on the, on it. Uh, so it got up to about two and a half, three feet, and um, toppled the planetarium projector, the one that we've had since 1969. Now, this is the new Science Center and Planetarium, what we're working with right now. Uh, the administration very great, 
graciously let me use the cafeteria and hopefully soon the kitchen at Hargrave Elementary School to inflate the dome and to set up a science center. Now it's a lot smaller scale, but there's still a lot of interaction the kids get to do in here. And so far we've seen over 2000 kids in here since July of 2021 when we reopened for face-to-face -face for most of the rest of the year. Okay, so the timeline for the planetarium rebuild has been a long and eventful journey. Um, in December 2016, the superintendent's cabinet gave me the approval to deploy the inflatable planetarium in January. We met with a group of people in the exploration station and Tim Little committed the um, Robinson County Partnership for Children uh, multi-purpose room for us to use almost every day we wanted to use it between 2017 and 2020. Uh, we saw over 20,000 students in that facility, in that location. And it was basically just big enough. It was like the room was built for an inflatable planetarium. It was perfect size um, with enough entry and exit space for the kids to get in and get out. But that was all. But um, it was wonderful. And it was, I'm so grateful to the partnership for extending that room to us. We, I estimate that we've, we gained about $40,000 worth of um, in-kind donation in terms of free use of that room, which normally costs either $75 or $125 a day. And in February, you'll be seeing Tim Little, for whom a plaque will be given to honor that, that uh, donation to us, to the school board and to the public schools. Um, November 2017 was the first meeting of our Rising Phoenix pub Public Advisory Board, community members um, that, that were banding behind me to get the rebuild started. And um, they actually have been instrumental in keeping me motivated, if nothing else. They provide a whole lot of support in the community, most of which I never see. But, um, but they're doing great guns and they're wonderful. So we moved back to, uh, of course, um, we moved back into Hargrave's caf cafeteria. And then in April of this year, I met with um, astronaut Bill MacArthur via Zoom meeting and also Representative Graham, and spent a lot of time back and forth with Danny Britt's office. And um, basically, you're going to see some of the evidences I sent to them um, to say, hey, maybe this should be included in the state budget. And Senator Britt included the planetarium um, in the state budget, but his version was taken out during Senate negotiations. And then about two weeks later, uh, Representative Graham introduces the planetarium rebuild into the state budget and that's the version that's stuck and of course the budget passed when the governor signed it back in november Oops. okay so these are some letters of support i sent to um the senator and representative and also um to other members of the community who were curious about this uh, these are all letters from my peer professionals as a matter of fact because of my request for a letter of support to the International Planetarium Society, they actually have a template on their webpage now where you can basically fill in the name of the institution and write a bare bones support letter, plus particulars for the individual institution you're supporting. So there's now a web template thanks to us, thanks to our efforts. Um, more, more support letters. Um, but this is my favorite one. This is from uh, Todd Boyette at the, um, at the Moorhead Planetarium up in Chapel Hill at UNC Chapel Hill. And um, that, that one meant the most to me because I look at the Moorhead as kind of like the mother dome for the state of North Carolina, by far the earliest planetarium built in North Carolina, and I think the fourth built in the United States back in 1932. So that partnership means a lot to me. We're getting a lot of back and forth with the Moorhead Planetarium to provide services for our students for free, again, pro bono. So, um, you know, just, um, now this is a packet that was put together by an entity who shall not be named. Um, but they put this packet together to also give it to the senator and the representative and other members of the um, state house to, uh, to see what we were about and what we're up to. Basically, um, the design of a, the, the first draft of a design for what a planetary and science center might look like uh, is on page two here on the right. And then uh, this graphic here, in April, I made a whole bunch of phone calls and uh, do, did, a little, did a little road tripping to see various superintendents so that we could get quotes from the superintendents in the region. Of course, Dr. Williamson's in there as well. 
on Dr. Williamson's hitting clean up there at the bottom. Um, but um, but the basic version is um, they saw it as a regional facility as well as a facility for the, for the public schools, Robinson County. And um, that's the letter of support, which I didn't even ask for, from uh, Dr. Atkinson and Bladen County Schools, their superintendent. So that was a very nice touch. And then, of course, the ultimate letter of support for me, one of my real heroes, as soon as I learned about his story, um, Bill MacArthur, the astronaut who commanded Expedition 12, which you see the Roman numeral for up there at the top of his uh, letter, in support of the rebuild. So there's a lot of community support out there, and there's a lot of professional support out there for doing what we're doing. And of course, now we have $5 million from the state to start the process. And um, so thanks to negotiation skills of Senator Britt and Representative Graham, we have the item in the budget, and it's been approved. So um, our next steps, of course, are completely up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. I'm going to answer any questions you might have for me. Um, Mr. Chair? Dr. Emanuel. This may be to you, Dr. Williams, and, and uh, also to Mr. Brandt. Yes, In 2016-15, when the NISA plans were drawn for the Technology High School, you know, we did <clears throat> include the planetarium, and then there was some negotiation for UNCP. My question is, and anyone can answer, and this basically is the uh, Technology High School, is not the planetarium part of that? I'm asking someone, anyone could answer. I hope so. I'm just gonna break in here. I'm sorry, Dr. Williamson, but I gotta steal your thunder a little bit here. Um, I've been advocating for sticking the Planetarium and Science Center within the body of a larger campus since basically day two after the flood back in 2016. So I've been pushing for this thing for a while. So yes, definitely. And maybe Mr. Craig, I know he was involved in that in the initial form, the draft. There was a big committee who did the draft uh, blueprint for the technology high school. And then there was a lot of discussion about UNCP and all that. But then initially that planetarium was within that technology high school. It was going to be at that site. I don't know with the politics and all where that stands with the Technology High School. Mr. Craig may know more. Well, I will say it's, uh, from my understanding, it's off the table at UNCP. There was a, uh, they got some funding for a science center and they were looking for additional funding and I don't think that happened. So as far as a planetarium now, we're looking at something that would be um, the public schools of Robinson County. This money was funded for the public schools. And there'll be some discussions, I'll just say later tonight, about planetarium, technology, high school, and uh, those being combined. So when we get to a certain point, we'll try to answer that question. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Brandt, you have anything else? Uh, no, sir, I'm done, unless uh, you guys have more questions for me. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I think we were going down to item number four. Is that correct? Item yeah. number four, A, Senate Bill, the Budget Bill 105. Uh, Erica is going to talk about and the budget bill in terms of a study as it relates to months of employment, ADM, and FTEs in terms of a partnership with the community college. Erica. So as everybody's aware, um, we tend to share our students various dual enrollment opportunities with the community college, um, early college, CCP, and other programs that we have in place. So what's happening right now is we get to count those students in our ADM, and the community college also gets to count those students for their purposes. I'm not sure if they count them as FTEs or what their um, denomination is is considered but so that those students that we have are essentially getting counted multiple times it appears that the legislation wants a study done um, to see what the impact is there and it sounds to us like they want those students to only be counted as one child so it sounds like there may be some splitting between we'd have to develop systems to 
if the child's on our campus half the day, then we would get half and RCC would get the other half instead of both, in, both of us getting funded um, for that child more than one time. And the outcome of this study may not show a fiscal impact until the 23-24 school year. But this is a study that the legislation has approved to happen and we just wanted everyone to be aware of it and that it could have a financial impact on the district. Any questions I can answer? And it's specifically related to the collaborative efforts, you know, in place right now for the dual enrollment classes. Circle let me ask, any idea how many kids we got dual enrolled now? Any? I don't have an idea. I don't get a lot of um, student data. As long as they're included in our ADM, that's kind of the end of it for as far as I'm concerned. Yes. And they are. Yeah, about, two, about 200. About 200. Yeah, I can check what you do. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just, my point is, this could have a major impact on us and RCC as far as counting these students with ADM and the money we get. So, uh, and we're looking at maybe, as we said, about a year and a half, two years before we find out anything. So, just kind of make people aware this could have some major impacts as far as finances for the school system. That's, that is absolutely correct. The impact, as Erica's uh, talked about, is we're either going to gain half of our ADM where we're getting that full position now, or we will get the full ADM position, which means less students in some of those programs. So that's the implication of this study. Do we receive full ADM or have somebody's going to take a, a loss of, of funds? Dr. Manuel? I would hope, I mean, I know that they were doing, I, she said they were doing the study and I, I, I understand the pension pennies, but I sure hope that it doesn't negatively impact the students' um, the potential to expand the curriculum. And I hope it wouldn't pit us against them as far as money is concerned, because the students would be the ones that would lose. We, we had Chairman Smith and I had a joint meeting uh, with President Singler and with uh, County Manager Ms. Blue. Um, in terms of partnerships and what that should look like at that time. I'm not aware of the budget had not passed of uh, this study. Um, President Single and I talked on Friday, I think it was, that it is our intent to continue to work together and to keep in focus the needs of our students and determine if indeed this comes to fruition, how can we work through it? And the focus, of course, um, looks as though it's on the cooperative and innovative high schools or the early college systems, which of course impact several counties. I'm not exactly sure the final count of how many uh, districts have an early college, but it's, it is quite substantial. There are um, maybe 50 or more. I'm not really sure, but I mean, that was the whole intent of the early college process was to encourage that those working relationships and the dual enrollment processes between the community colleges and the high school. But they're required to do it. Right. They are required to, yes. the colleges are required to do it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ms. Erica, any, any idea of, of what kind of deficit we're facing in, in that scenario? We'd have to wait and see the impact of the study and how they would look at doing the count. If it would be, you know, majority gets to keep the child or if they would actually make force us to individually look at periods. We don't know enough of the variables yet to make that um, determination. And so our state dollar amount of per pupil expenditure, what is that? 3000 It's different for every program report, but on average we get about, uh, we spent about 10175 per child last year. Of state funds? State funds. Right. So that's the starting point for the math. Yes. Dr. Roberts said it might be 200, between 200. That was just a rough estimate. Yeah, I uh, 200, so what, maybe $2 million? Yeah, she said we had roughly 200 for the fall, and she's checking now to give us an accurate number. And does that include our CTE students? Because that's part of this conversation. Let me ask. Okay. Any other questions? But the 10,000 is the starting point for the math on losing an ADM on a month 
Ms. Gentry. The early college system was never fully funded by the state anyway. We only get, when it first started, we got around 316,000 each year. Now we get 275,000, but of course our financial input is somewhere closer between 1.7 and $2 million to support the program. So it comes from all different funding sources. Gentry. I'm just uh, thinking out of the box a little bit here. Um, you know, for for a long time now, and, and it is, it's been critical for a long time uh, uh, in our dilemma of retaining young people in our community to, to begin their careers here and, and to stay here. And, and that's becoming more and more of a deficit. My, my question is, and I'm just throwing this out, <clears throat> if, if we could, and probably Dr. Roberts already been done, uh, to track the students that are in early college, beyond early college, and where they are, where they've gone, what they're doing, and if we could, could work up some data that points to us retaining more than maybe people think that are staying in Robinson County or close by, you know, who knows? We might get some uh, help from somebody, a, a governmental entity. I, and I'm thinking specifically the county commissioner. Can do that. Do you think that'd be worth exploring? I, yes. I think they do a graduation exit report, the counselors. I believe they do. They do, yes. They do something. Or uh, they did. They did, yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that puts us down to four B. And let me make a comment. I think you might have an agenda there. And you know, there was a uh, pre-meeting with some uh, legal implications and stuff that you might see us not going over every part here. And that was covered in that pre-meeting. So that's the reason you see me kind of bouncing around on the agenda that you have here. Uh, 4B is the approval to build a new career center, science, technology, and planetarium. Taking that me or? Yeah, I guess it's Dr. Emanuel's question. Dr. Emanuel, you have a question? The, well, the one you asked earlier. Uh, we are here tonight to look at the proposal of building a new career center, science, technology, and planetarium. And just for information, you know, we have we have a five million dollars that's come in for a planetarium. And again, now we've got the fifteen million needs based grant that we have, and we're in the process now of wanting to apply for up to thirty five more million, which would give us fifty million in the needs based grant area, uh, plus money from the county commissioners. Now, there is money that RCC was going to have, but because of this information that you were just given about the dual enrollment, we can't count on that right now, if I'm saying that correctly. That's correct. And, and they had got appropriated $19 million that they were willing to put into this endeavor, but because we're not sure where this enrollment can be counted, they can't commit to that right now. Uh, the reason this is of urgency now is the $35 million deadline for application is I think it's March the 15th, March 15th. if I'm not mistaken. And uh, all the paperwork and everything has to be done and turn in by then in order to see if you will get that money. Now, keep in mind, if we turn that in and get that, and, and I'm always feeling like we feeling good that we would, that's $50 million plus money from the commissioners. Uh, if you want to say plus the planetarium, if you're looking at 55, 60, 65 million dollars, that we would have that we could put towards this. This is not counting FEMA money. You know, that's still out there waiting to see what's going to happen. We're not, not even talking about that. That's another, another category. But this is looking at what we could do for a technology high school planetarium at this time. Uh, now, from that standpoint there, are looking at location now to discuss that or we're going to bring some stuff to the board tomorrow night if everybody's approval. I'll let Dr. Williamson carry that. So our intent is to amend our board agenda for tomorrow night and to list on the information Dr. Emanuel your question. 
will it be the board intent and can we get board approval to build all these program areas in one building? So your question, can we connect the planetarium to the new CTE Center Science and Technology? And that's what we're going to debate tomorrow night. And if we can agree, we are asked to waive policy and get approval on that. That's necessary for the application. But to your point, will we build everything on one site in one facility? And so again, we're moving to information tomorrow night. And if we can agree, we'll ask you to waive policy, take a vote to do that. Dimension the sites and they're going to be looked at. Okay. Go ahead and do it. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's going to be brought up again as information items to look at that tomorrow night. And, and I know the question comes up, okay, where we're we building? What are we going to do? Well, the sites have to be looked at to make sure they're okay. And there's two sites right now that, that has come and been brought forward. One is land we own on 7-Eleven, which we bought um, two or three years ago. It's right close to DOT. I think we bought 47 acres at that particular location. And then the other side is at Comtech. We own land at Comtech, and we're looking at checking on some possibilities with that. The need-based grant that we wrote for 15 million, when that grant was written, the 15 million, it's got on there that the location of the technology school would be at Comtech. That's the location they put down. Now, we can sit here and say, we're putting it here, we're putting it here. Until you go there and do some boring and some site test and land test, and you don't know where you can put it. So that's the two places that I know has been brought up to be looked at. And then the other idea was, can we go here? Can we build it all together and put it in one location? Now, um, you know, I can give my two cents worth on it. Uh, and Mr. Lawson was on here earlier, and we talked about some different things a few years ago about planetarium. Um, Technology school, we talked about central office, we talked about bus garage, and we talked about new schools, especially like one time in the St. Paul's area. And uh, from my idea, the planetarium and I'm going to say technology school, they need to be together. Uh, I think the science to each other lends that, that those two things should be together uh, because I think one would benefit the other if they're in the same location. Uh, and I think Mr. Brandt, you know, he spoke to that also. And some of us a couple of years ago went up to High Point University. Now, we're not going to build anything like they had, but they had one unbelievable place there that combined science and technology and just anything in that STEM area you could think of. It was just an unbelievable facility. But now that facility, I don't know how many millions of dollars it cost, but it was unbelievable. But again, what we want to present tomorrow night for information, and then if we can move it to action, is to go forth with this and some other things so they will have the leeway here to go ahead and apply for the grant. Because March the 15th, even though that seems like it's a long ways away, it's not a long ways away. So I've said a few things there. I might can answer some questions, and if you have some, please raise your hand. Dr. Emanuel. Mr. Craig. And you can probably answer this. You know, we switched land up there one time, right? At Comtech. Now, you tell me if I'm wrong. Was Were there some mumblings about the land we switched to that we were not sure it would perk? Was that discussed one time in the history? Mr. Grady might know. I don't. Well, Dr. Man, let me say the, the land that's owned at Comtech now, that switch you're talking about, I'm going to just say was prior to. I came here, I just heard the land was switched and knew it was switched. So I don't know what the situation is with what we have now. I do know there has been some conversation about our land there at Comtech now is located behind where Native Angels is on that property. There has been some conversation, uh, the county commissioner's own land that is adjacent to Highway 711 next to Native Angels that there's possibility that they would be interested in swapping the land they own, which would give us road frontage at Highway 711. And basically, it's an open field area. But again, you're talking about the geology, the testing and stuff that would have to be done to make sure. But I know there's some discussion with that. 
But now what the land it was on actually before, I just generally know where that's at. I don't know exactly what was swapped out and the conditions of the two lands now. But I would think that out there at the road fringe would be better than what I'm understanding we have now. That's just my understanding. <clears throat> Anyone else? Dr. Williamson? Yeah. And, and Wait, excuse me, may I make one more comment? Yes, ma'am. The comment is this. If we own land in two locales, it doesn't make sense to go buy land someplace else. It should be either or to me. I mean, we don't have that kind of money. I don't think. We're not talking, <coughs> we're not talking about buying any more land, Dr. No. I hope not. No, no. That's, we're talking about swapping two pieces no. of land. We would swap that at Comtech for more land at Comtech, but it wouldn't be no buying. Okay, what I was trying to say, I understand that, but I think, I can't tell grown people what to do, but I don't see the board wanting another area to go build a high school. It, to me, it should be either of those two, the two we have, the two parcels, either one. I didn't mean to buy some more land, a new plot and north. Mm -hmm. Robinson or something. I meant, why would we want another area and we have those two areas right there at our taking and they belong to us? Well, I might have not been clear, but there was no intention in what I was saying to say we were going to buy some more. Okay. I was not saying I didn't mean to imply that. If I did, I apologize. It was just that at Comtech that if they were willing to trade land down there with what we had, we would just trade it. But it was not intentions of going and buying land. The land on 7-Eleven that's down at close to DOT. That's the land we bought a couple of years ago. Which has the most acreage? The land on the DOT is 47 acres. You, got you, got, you might have a map in there, but it's 47 acres with some uh, some trees on it. And the land at Comtech is like right at 35, 36 acres. Oh. Bonte, you got a question? <clears throat> I just got a, a, a comment. Do you think we need to build uh, the CTE and the sanitarium together? But my thing is, you know, uh, we you can always sell. You can always sell land. We got land. We can always sell. People buy and sell stuff all the time. You can you can sell if you want to. I just think we need to look at the location. I think we also need to take advantage of our highways that we got. We need to take advantage of 95 or 74. A lot of people, a lot of traffic on them things every day. So travel place in our county, 74 and 95. I'm just thinking we just need to take a look at that. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. One of the things we talked about in the pre-meeting intentionally uh, was that when we awarded this money, we select the architect design team to do the work that the design need may dictate well. And, and, and that's where we kind of left that. So that may dictate some of all what we've talked about at this point depending on the size of the facility, programs, all of that. And, and we kind of left that as an open conversation once we got to that point and had some sense of the design and the need. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Mr. Terry? Yes, sir. Um, so Dr. Dr. Williamson, um, based on your experience and all the uh, the building and construction that went on in Hope County, when we get ready to, if we want to build new schools, uh, do firms, uh, design firms typically take into account um, census information, uh, maybe where the, the population's changing and, and growing throughout the county in terms of selecting the best location? normally do based on those projections uh if you're building a traditional school in a sense this is a non-traditional school uh, we want to locate it as near to the center because we're poor students from from all high schools uh, so traditionally normally that is correct non-traditional it's going to be based on program and based on where we can pour students less travel time so it's not necessarily about uh, population um, in terms of uh, putting it to where it's quickly accessible to the majority. It's more about a central location accessible to all. Is that what you're saying? That's, that's correct. 
Let me, let me, if you don't mind, Dr. Williams and Craig, if y'all don't mind. We did a study, and I didn't want to get into this. I don't think I really want to talk about it a whole lot. We did a study, uh, Terry, back with Robbie Ferris, and he did a, he did a, he was paid to do a study of the county, and he came back with a map of doing those uh, eight, was it eight K-8s? I mean, was it eight, eight or 10 or whatever? So many K-8s, and what he did is, he didn't, he didn't, on the map, he didn't say, we, Randy alluded, we know St. Paul's is growing, the North End of the county is growing up around St. Paul's. They got, a, they used to have a thousand kids at St. Paul's Elementary. <clears throat> that up a little bit, move some of them to the middle school. But he did a geographical map of where you would put those K-8s throughout the county and what schools would go there, like at Union or uh, Oxendown or whoever. And then you, you, he didn't say, well, you'd build it on this spot. He just gave you a geographical area. It needs to be in this vicinity. Does that, does that make sense? That's correct. That's correct. But, but excuse me, may I say something? Amanda. What the superintendent said, this is a specialized school. And what a specialized school, the superintendent said, you need it centrally located because of the travel time. Yeah, I'm not talking about yeah. I'm not disputing you. I was just trying to help clarify a point. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Wings. If I, I do may, and just as a reminder, remember historically in the past, we can only apply for a need based grant every five years. That's a change in application. So some of the future needs we can address by applying for a need based grant every year that they offer that opportunity. And, and that's a major plus for us because, again, we do have a clear plan of, of what we need where for traditional schools at this point. So we think we stand a better opportunity to address our future building needs based on being able to apply for a need-based grant every year if they offer that. So all that's a plus for us. The fact is we can apply for this and get it. We could come back next year and apply for another one and get it that could go to some other location or some other type school in the county. That's correct. Which is totally 180 degrees of what it's been in the past. You've been limited every five years. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions at this point? The only other thing that uh, I'd like to clarify is the old grant had to be new. This new grant, uh, uh, Erica says, it can be you could go and if you need to build a wing on at a facility or anything, you can, can you like next year we say we're going to, go ahead, I'm sorry. It says new buildings, additions, repairs, and renovations. Right. Previously it said only new construction. Right. So that, 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 have, that goes back to that old theory where we went back and we looked at all the schools that had less than 500 students in it. And I don't want to keep opening different can of worms, but there's different demographics we can look at and we can address and try to take care of them while the money's there. But if we all know that the money's just going to be there a short period of time. And once it's gone, it'll be gone. Okay. So I'm appreciative to the board that, that you had a vision and you've done some pre-work in terms of future plans and you have some options. That's to our advantage with the change in the grant. So, so certainly having this document will speed up the process for us and help us. Thank you. Okay, we will come back to B. There's no other questions. Uh, 4C is approval of architect design firm construction firm. Uh, Dr. Williamson, give us some information on that. So our intent again tomorrow is to amend our board agenda uh, under information that we will request that the board approval of Robbie Ferris and his design group, F, F, L, and A, to, yes, SFL and A, to help us with the new application, not to employ them as our architect design group, but simply to help with the application. We can take that vote because that dollar amount will not exceed $50,000. So again, we want to add that on information and then go to waive policy if possible and get them approved to help us with the new application. 
And, and part of some background on that, folks, when we did the 15 million application, you had to turn in a building like we were doing a um, technology school in along looking at getting FEMA money. So he's got all the information that, you know, would be some funds would have to pay him. But again, he's got the information instead of having to go look for somebody else to go there and get all that information and pay them to start back from scratch. And again, you're having to try to get all this done by March 15th. That's, that's the driver, the March 15th uh, deadline. Any questions on that? So if I can, let me go back if there's nothing else here. I'm going to go back to Dr. Williamson to 4B and 4C. Uh, are we wanting to put all this on information tomorrow night? And then if it goes to information so we can present it to the whole board, then it could be asked to be, it would be asked to be moved to action item to go ahead and act on it so we could get approval. But in 4B, we would be asking for approval to build a new center, science and technology, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, and planetarium. Uh, and then 4C, we would be asking for the approval of the architect. That's uh, approval of Robbie Ferris. Robbie Ferris as the architect. To help us, well, no, not that the architect. I'm sorry. But to help us with, with the, the plan. Yes. That's okay. right, with the plan. That's the, so there's no misunderstanding. If we're asking for the approval tomorrow night, we are looking at the Science, Technology, Planetarium, Career Center, uh, asking for approval to do that and put all those items together in one location. That's correct. Okay. And that could be based on after getting the sites checked and seeing which ones we could look at. Is that correct? Yes. We're looking at that being correct? Okay. Let me say that again loud where people can hear. The 4B, that approval, and also the approval of 4C for uh, Robert Ferris's architect firm to help with the doing of this needs base grant. And uh, again, that's the March 15th deadline and asking for those approvals. We'll go for information item and then if we can, after discussion with the entire board, then we would look at going to the uh, action item for those. Mr. Ernie, you have a question? Yeah, I want to make sure the March 15th was moved. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any questions? Mr. Gentry? Mr. Craig, I <clears throat> I don't want to get too far ahead of the discussion and the agenda, but I want to make sure I understand that, and I'm specifically talking about C. Of course, we've been given a copy of the proposed plans, and I'm assuming this is a prototype. This is not the final product. What you see on those plans there, Mr. Gentry, those are plans that his company did for us, I think it says 2018. That was, uh, I think there's four things on there, and I don't have them in my mind right quick, four different plans of possible ways to go. And then they just did a K-8 prototype school that they did in 2018. And that was work they did on a K, it's not a technology school now, that's the K-8 school, and then there was four things they did, like a technology center, and then nine schools or ten schools. That was something they did that we, I guess, Mike, we approved doing some of that. We're looking at one of those options, but it was also forthcoming with money had to come from the state. That money never came. So none of this year was ever started. This was proposals, that option one, two, three, and four, you see, and there was different categories there. But I think the one we really looked at cost over a billion dollars, and that money was never appropriated by the state or federal government, so none of this never got started. But you note in every one of these, there is a new career tech high school, and that's why we're looking at with this money now to get started with that one. If that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And in other words, this, this is strictly a prototype. It's not something that's going to happen. Right. It's something to look at. They would, they would have to be some other things to happen to get these here going. Okay. The biggest one being money, 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 I'm going to say. Mr. Ernie? Ms. Larry, the, the, goal, the goal of what you're being proposed to tonight is to get your career and the technology together, and it's going to be centrally located so all the, all the county students can benefit from it. 
right. so that was the, the purpose of going this way first at least you've got the first stepping stone to the advancement of the whole county the whole county can actually benefit from this design that they're talking about any other questions Dr. Williams have anything else I have a motion, and just so you know, uh, here tonight, Mr. Vonte is here. He's on construction. Uh, Mr. Terry is online on, on um, finance, and Mr. Lawson is uh, there as chairman of construction. Uh, can we have a motion that we present item 4B and 4C as information items tomorrow night? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Lawson, second by Mr. Vonte. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We'll take care of that tomorrow night. Anything else? I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.